Hi there, and a big warm welcome to this Blue Ben session. Uh, five reasons multi channel marketers need a CDP. So, over the next 25 um, to 30 minutes, we're going to be running through the uh, five most common CDP use cases uh, and then looking at uh, various other key CDP learnings. Um, so, we, we hope you find the session beneficial. And if you have any questions throughout the session, feel free to send them in to us using the Bright Talk box on the right hand side of your screen. Um, my name is Jen, I'm on the marketing team. I'll be keeping an eye out for those questions coming through. Um, and we also have Gabby, um, who is based over in Raleigh in our US office, and she'll be running through the session in just a few moments. Um, like with all of our other Bright Talk sessions, they are automatically recorded, and then you can find them um, on our Bright Talk channel um, by just by typing uh, Blue Ven in the search bar, and then you can see this session and all of our other previous webinars that we've done as well. So feel free to catch up on any of our other content if you wish. Um, Gabby, are you ready to jump into the session? Absolutely, and hi everyone. Thanks for joining today. As Jen said, I'm Gabby, and I work with marketers across a range of verticals, helping them to make informed, data-driven decisions and leverage a true multi-channel view of each customer to enhance their customer engagement and communications. Now, as I talk to different marketers, um, we talk about a lot about why they're investing in a CDP and what they hope to achieve. What I've found is regardless of industry, there are common issues and use cases that come up time and time again, and the CDP can play a key role in solving them. But it, not all CDPs are created equal, so I'll also highlight a few differentiators between CDPs as we go through and provide some helpful guides at the end to help you kickstart your own CDP project and build a business case. So to get started, let's talk about the customer experience and CDP. When we think about the customer experience, I think that most of us would agree knowing our customers and tailoring the engagement to them and their needs leads to a better overall customer experience and increases the likelihood of a satisfied customer. This isn't a new concept. Small business owners have been getting to know their customers for centuries. They repeat, recognize repeat and frequent customers know their buying habits, and can respond accordingly with product recommendations or even ask for feedback on a previous purchase. Customers return because the business knows them and can provide them value in the interaction. Do this at scale for larger organizations. The benefits remain largely the same, but it's no longer as simple as knowing your customers at one shop. We have to think about capturing and collecting data over the course of a customer journey uh, that isn't always straightforward, and customers don't always make it easy. They interact with us in different channels, provide us different variations of information, and they follow a path that's most convenient for them, not necessarily the journey we planned out. Really, we could spend an entire session on the customer journey. The bottom line, though, is throughout the buying journey, customers are providing us with a ton of data, and where we can, we're capturing it as much as possible. But even once we've captured this data, we still face a number of challenges. Things like data living in disparate silos throughout the organization. This requires manual processes and cross-team collaboration to access the data. And for many organizations, it makes it nearly impossible to have a single source of the truth. These three challenges combined all lead to an inability to analyze or access data without IT resources or advanced query writing skill sets inconsistencies across departments, and bottlenecks when marketers flood IT re with requests. Add on to that thinking about regulatory skills and documentation constraints, and you have a lot to consider. All of these problems present roadblocks as we think about creating that seamless cross-channel experience. Ultimately, how do we dissolve it in? More and more marketers are turning to a customer data platform. But what really is a customer data platform and, and how does that come together? The, real, the CDP Institute defines a real CDP as one that can ingest data from any source, capture the full data, or the full detail rather, of data ingested, store the data indefinitely, and create unified profiles with identified individuals, as well as share it with any system. These are all powerful capabilities of any CDP solution 
and I'm sure many of you can think of a number of ways this could help your organization. But for most marketers I talk to, it's more than just identifying problems, or rattling off capabilities to justify the investment. We have to build a use case, a business case around tangible ROI for the organization. So what really are those use cases? Let's start then with bringing together different data silos. We talked about the customer journey, the number of points throughout where data is provided, and as data-driven marketers, we aim to capture data for as many, as many of these avenues as possible, whether that be through online or offline interactions. Frequently, though, this data ends up siloed by channel, by department, or even written down on a piece of paper in our brick-and-mortar location. What we end up with is a disjointed view of the customer that doesn't take into account all of their interactions with us as a brand. And while it's great that we're collecting it, it's really important to bring all of these data silos together into a single consistent view to create that, that consistent customer experience that we're striving for. Take Subaru as an example. Before implementing a CDP, marketing was managed in silos both at the distributor level and by each franchise. This meant there was no centralized data sharing and customers and product prospects received conflicting messages because no one had a single view across everything. Customer could spend a lot of time on the website customizing the exact vehicle they were looking for, scheduling a test drive, but when they arrived at the dealership, the dealer was unaware of this detailed information and they may not even have the vehicle on the lot. They ultimately fixed their data flow issues by putting a single customer view at the center of what they were doing and saw immediate benefits, not only in terms of actual sales numbers, but an increase in test drives and an overall quality of customer communications improved. By bridging the gap in understanding between online and offline interactions and providing a holistic customer view across all possible touch points of an interaction, a CDP can unify these silos of information and drive greater understanding of the customer. This applies whether you're an automotive dealer personalizing emails, based on a test drive, or a retailer trying to understand how in-store purchases relate to someone's online behavior. Now, as we start to think about this and as we start to bring all of these pieces together, though, it goes beyond just understanding the vehicle someone wants to test drive and when they arrive on site or personalizing an email campaign. It's about further understanding of trends and opportunities. If you don't have a CDP today, how easy is it for you to identify loyal customers over the last three years? How easy is it for you to narrow that down by a specific product category or figure out what the in-store versus out-of-store purchases look like? The CDP allows you to identify these tools, bring them together, and start to uncover these different opportunities uh, as a whole, making it easier to answer these questions without the need for writing complex queries. Example of this. So we work with a large international beauty organization. They have 20 plus brands, both mid-range and high-end. And customers may buy from one or many of their brands. As you can imagine, with this many brands and products to choose from, they face a very real challenge of ensuring that customers receive the right messaging from the right brands without being overwhelmed. Their main goal in implementing the single customer view was to ensure that a coordinated group level brand experience is being delivered to the customer without the organization falling victim to intra-brand revenue competition. In order to achieve this, they had to work out who their highest value customers were across each brand and target them accordingly. As they began to work with the solution though, they realized that the trends and opportunities went far beyond just understanding who's my highest value customer in each brand all the data in one place and giving marketers the direct access to use it, it's much easier to start to uncover previously hidden product insights. Things like, although a product may have fewer sales, sales revenue is not the only driver of a valuable product. Uh, these products may also be valuable in shorter life cycle to help drive repeat purchase and upsell opportunities. Access to data is also challenged commonly held assumptions around a product's role in the customer life cycle. For example, is the lower price product good for recruiting new customers 
or is a more niche product that should only be promoted to certain customers as part of a more targeted cross-sell strategy. It gives insights that can drive better decision-making, more effective campaigning, and allow marketing teams to direct their efforts towards actions with the highest possible returns, be that financial or customer experience focus. Now, while uncovering product and purchase pattern insights may not be the first use case you think of when you think of CDP, creating these consistent relevant experiences across all of your channels almost certainly is. It's found that nearly ever, every customer I talk to brings to the table when we first started a discussion about CDP. It's ultimately really become table stakes, but I think it's still one of the most powerful use cases when we think about the benefits of a CDP. How many times in your own experiences have you interacted with a brand, realized they have no idea who you are because the messaging you're served up is different across channels? Consumers, I think we're more forgiving of this when it's a large brand than we would be of, say, the local shop owner forgetting who we are. But more and more customers are expecting this personalization, even from large brands. And they reward brands that get it right through loyalty. And that's where CDP comes into play. Even as a large brand, we have the ability to create these consistent, relevant experiences because we have all the data. I think Space NK illustrates this really well. They're a highly customer-centric brand. They aim to make the entire customer experience seamless and feel really personal. Leveraging the CDP and a loyalty and review system, they're able to seamlessly bring data into their communications. For example, post-purchase messaging encourages customers to leave a review in return for extra points on their loyalty card. And follow-up messaging updates the customer on how many points they have, reminding them they'll lose it if they're not used within three months. This, of course, prompts a visit to the store, driving additional purchases, driving additional revenue, and loyalty. A campaign like this requires a high number of insights, personalization, and data on each customer, but it feels seamless when you get it right and pull it all together. Ultimately, it's a cross-channel experience that ensures loyal customers are always aware of their program balance, they're encouraged through rewards to keep coming back, and they continue engaging with the brand, further building that brand loyalty. This is all underpinned and tied together through the CDP and the single customer view, and the results in improved customer experience, both in loyalty as well as an increase in reviews and referrals. All of these things drive increased revenue for the brand, the end of the day is really the ultimate goal for any program. That being said, driving revenue through cross-channel coordinated campaigns, practical if it takes two weeks to get a campaign out the door or pivot when circumstances change. We all know how quickly uh, situations change and we have to adapt and adjust and be able to pivot quickly. All real CDPs ingest, capture, store data, create unified views, those items we talked about at the beginning, and ultimately they can share it with any other system. But where some CDPs start to set apart is the ability to take it one step further. Not only sharing this data with other systems for execution, but allowing marketers to easily access and analyze the data, as well as plan and orchestrate campaigns across both online and offline channels, one single point of decision. When you think about your own teams, how many different systems are you working in on a daily basis to coordinate your campaigns? Does your social team have visibility directly into what's going on in your email channel? What about offline channels? Are there agencies in play for some channels but not others? The White Company had always used an agency for their database management, audience, audience selections, and insights. And we see this a lot. You may even be in a similar position yourself but this agency model can sometimes create those same bottlenecks that having to involve an IT resource for every query does. It's just not as easy as having access to the data yourself, tools to really dig into it. This also leads to a reactive rather than proactive approach to campaigning. You simply don't have the ability to pull together last minute campaigns and insight. And it's these constraints that ultimately led to the white company bringing their solution in house. The results for them measurable efficiencies around accessing data. They were able to reduce campaign time from inception to execution down from two weeks to closer to two days. And had access to far more insights without, within their customer data 
without needing to employ agency resources. And even more recently, as we think about how COVID has had an impact, stores opening, closing, uh, reopening again due to different impacts, they were able to quickly pivot and inform customers via online channels when stores near them were open. In summary, implementing a CDP provides marketers with access to data and a multi-channel marketing approach provides a single point of decision. This not only removes data silos, but also helps break down operational or channel-specific silos, such as email teams, only an email channel, and an email tool. And it encourages your marketing team to make a whole, holistic approach to the experience. How can you improve efficiency and consistency across the board? Finally then, campaign reporting and attribution. I've talked a lot about bringing data silos together, creating a centralized point for decisioning, but a CDP can also provide a centralized point for the campaign reporting and attribution. For many customers, this provides greater insight into how touch points interrelate and influence the overall customer journey. Understanding what channels, creatives, and tactics are reaching the audience, driving the intended conversions, not only allowing marketing dollars to be spent more effectively, but also allowing the customer experience to be optimized further. If marketers know what's working and what isn't from an ROI perspective, they can allocate more marketing dollars to those touch points showing success. When the analysis shows there are touch points that are less effective, it's a chance to consider the why. Is it the channel? Is it the offer? Are there small changes that could make the touch point more effective? Or is it better just to move marketing spend away from it entirely? The answers to these questions won't be the same every time. Just like any set of analysis, one question may lead to another, but it starts with asking the first question. Now, reporting and attribution certainly aren't unique to a CDP. I think every MarTech solution I've ever worked with has reporting of some kind, and many even have some level of attribution. But these channel-specific reporting capabilities are almost always biased towards that channel. Email channels use last touch attribution to claim revenue for email. Google will claim revenue for Google, and Facebook will do the same. The reality, though, is the customer journey, as we discussed in the beginning, is far more complex than just a single click. Customers will interact multiple times in multiple channels before making a purchase, and ignoring these complexities in your reporting can lead to decision-making in a silo rather than decision-making based on the whole picture. At the end of the day, you can build the most complex, personalized cross-channel experience. But if you have no way to prove its value as a whole to your executive leadership team, it's going to be hard to continue justifying that spend. What then makes CDP reporting unique is the inherent removal of this channel bias. By viewing the reporting and attribution in the context of all touch points, rather than only within a single channel, some CDPs even allow you to overlay multiple attribution models at once, as opposed to restricting you to a single model. And this all together allows marketers to understand not just how a single channel may be performed, but performance across the full experience using models and measures that make the most sense for that specific organization. So for those of you keeping track, those are all five of the key marketing use cases I promised at the beginning of today's session. Realistically, the customers I speak with, the primary use cases for a CDP do revolve around marketing. And as primary users of the solution, I think that makes perfect sense. But as you're thinking about your business case and your organization, I think it's also worth noting at least a couple of other organizational use cases for the solution outside of just the marketing team. The insights derived from the CDP can provide a lot of information about the customer, but understanding the customer is also key to understanding who's most likely to buy uh, your product or your service on the prospect side. Marketing benefits from this when we think about who we're targeting, but sales teams can also benefit. This data can be used to empower that team as well. If you know who's most likely to buy, you know what your ideal customer looks like, you can focus time and resources on the right types of prospects and improve your opportunity to convert. And sales reps don't need to have access or utilize the actual CDP solution to see the benefits. Data from the CDP can be passed back to tools more frequently used by a sales team, things like a CRM, to ensure they have access to the relevant insights without needing to access the CDP itself. 
And the other thing here to consider is the ability to use orchestration tools as part of the overall engagement journey with a prospect, not just current customers. For example, if a prospect receives an email and clicks but takes no further action, maybe that flags a follow-up from a sales rep. I've also seen customers use data from a CDP for other niche use cases, like deploying the appropriate customer service reps to the appropriate store locations or regions based on the customers most likely to frequent that particular store. And finally, data science teams and other business intelligence teams can also benefit from a CDP. A CDP can be used to make clean customer data available to other systems, which includes your advanced analytics and modeling tools. This speeds up data prep for your data science team and enables them to focus on analyzing the data instead of worrying about whether or not the data is accurate. Some CDPs can also ingest outputs from these models, and that easily allows marketers to leverage the information and creates more cross-coordination within the organization between these different teams. Data can also be provided to business intelligence tools, and this ensures that the dashboards created in those tools are leveraging the same clean, accurate underlying data that marketers are using in their campaigns. My point is, at the end of the day, the primary use case for a CDP is marketing, but the organization as a whole can benefit from it, not just the marketing team exclusively. So hopefully you're thinking about multiple ways your organization could benefit from a CDP, whether that's through unifying disparate data silos, uncovering hidden insights, orchestrating multiple campaigns, or even maybe some of the less primary use cases. But regardless of what resonated with you the most, I think it's also worth thinking about some of the capabilities that differ among CDP vendors. I said it at the beginning, while there are key things that make a CDP a real CDP, there's also differences between different organizations. Things like cleansing, hygiene, enhancement. Do they have multi-channel orchestration? Do they have multi-touch attribution? How easy is it to integrate to other systems? And what's the overall flexibility and ease of use of the solution? These aren't parts of the real CDP definition, but I think they're key to ensuring you have a robust and trustworthy data foundation to power all of your marketing efforts. I say this as the aim is really to remove the need for those manual processes and additional systems. And what I found is if the tool you've deployed isn't taking care of these processes for you, you're just gonna add them in throughout other processes in the organization. So having them all in one place from the get-go makes it a lot easier and more seamless to ensure you have that trustworthy foundation. And finally, as you think about those business needs, there's also, I think, a tendency to look forward and think about how do these use cases change over time. Each CDP has their own unique roadmap, but there are, of course, common trends that we see across the industry. A few things that stand out to me I think AI and machine learning will continue to be a big part of the equation. Things like next best action will continue to evolve as marketers look to create customer experiences and journeys, not just based on their own insights and knowledge, but based upon models built to provide a custom experience for each customer. I think we'll continue to see evolution around ad tech integration and how marketers can leverage the rich insights held within a CDP to increase efficiencies and effectiveness there. And the integrations will really continue to go beyond marketing execution channels, I think. This trustworthy data foundation created by the CDP is being used more and more by operational systems, ensuring that clean and accurate data is not just available to the marketing team, but to the organization as a whole. And finally, while some CDPs already play this role as a channel management hub, channels will continue to evolve new channels will emerge, and some channels will fade further into the background. CDPs that are set up for flexibility and scale will more easily adapt and allow marketers to pivot with these changes and adopt new technologies quickly. So with that, thanks for joining me today. I hope you found this session valuable. As you think about your own organization and use cases, I encourage you to download the Blue Bend CDP business case template. It helps to aim, think through your aims key issues, objectives, and prioritize what's most important to you. So thanks again for your time, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Jen? Thank you very much, Gabby. 
And yeah, like Gabby said, make sure you download the attachment that you can see um, on the right-hand side of your screen now. It's actually um, an exclusive bit of content that we've um, attached to this webinar. We don't have it on our website. So if you think it would be of interest, definitely download it now while you can. Um, we did have a couple of questions through, Gabby. Um, someone asked, well, they said that they have um, a data warehouse already, and they've asked whether they need a CDP, how they link together. There's a bit of confusion there. So if you could clear that up, that would be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. So I think a data warehouse can play hand in hand with a CDP. Data warehouses are, are a powerful tool, but many times they contain data that goes beyond just customer information or data that you want to use within your marketing efforts. So really, I see data warehouses becoming a source for your customer data platform, providing the CDP with data uh, to leverage and combine with other sets of insights uh, to really give you the full picture. So while you may have a data warehouse already, I think there are still certainly use cases for a CDP. The data warehouse just becomes a part of the equation. Excellent. Um, and then someone else wrote in that they really appreciated the examples that you gave us. Um, but they wanted to know how technical those teams actually are, um, whether they, and they're, I think they're trying to work out whether they have the skill set that they would need to take on um, a piece of software like this. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, and I think that uh, the, the whole idea behind a CDP is removing that technical barrier, giving marketers access. So it's key to look for tools that provide that easy to use interface uh, you know, tools that allow you to drag and drop without having to write complex queries, remove those technical barriers. So the makeup of each team will vary, but I certainly think that marketers, even without a technical skill set, can still see a lot of value driven from a CDP that has an easy to use interface they can interact with. Excellent. Um, thanks very much for sending those questions through to us. Um, and if you have any more that you think of, please feel free to email us at marketing at blueven.com and we'd be happy to help. Um, I think it's also worth noting that we, um, we run a monthly um, uh, live webinar um, dem demonstration of our software, of our CDP, CDP and um, if you wanted to join on to that for the, for the next one that we'll run, which will be in a, in a couple of weeks' time, um, then you can do that by heading to blueven.com and then under our resources tab, um, we have a list of our upcoming webinars and then we list um, all of our Blueven demonstrations there. So if you want to see our CDP in action, then feel free to sign up to our November demo. Um, that's all from us today. Thank you very much for joining and I hope everyone has a lovely day. Thanks very much, Gabby. Thanks, everyone.